Well, that was kind of unexpected. Uh, randomly, seemingly, and without much fanfare, Blizzard have actually dropped pre-orders for Dragonflight. But that's definitely not the full story. Because the disclaimer on the store page says, Dragonflight will be available on or before December 31st, 2022. That is 2022. wild, man. This year, within six months. That's quite something, isn't it? Now, this sort of thing isn't abnormal, by the way, but it does fly in the face of speculation. You know, those, like, okay. December 31st disclaimers. We've had those for, like, every expansion. To but be fair, didn't Blizzard miss one of these disclaimers with, War uh, uh, with Warcraft, Warcraft 3 Reforged? Didn't they miss one of these, uh, the these disclaimers? I think that they did, yeah. Of course, most of us expected Q1 2023 for this expansion. As for why, well... The BlizzCon showing was a little bit sparse in terms of the actual game footage. The announcement yeah, took place, relatively speaking, later than normal, and I think we expected a chronologically more extensive testing process given the issues that Shadowlands and BFA has. And Legion. Well, that all appears to be false now. There's some implications. Let's talk about them. First, on development. Yeah. Second, on alpha. You know what? I'm just going to go wild. I'll talk about alpha first. I don't know when this alpha is going to come out. Like, whenever the alpha comes out, I'll play it that day. 100%. I'm going to play it. Uh, I want to go, and we're going to do the same shit that we do with every alpha. We're going to go into the places that we're not supposed to go in, and there's probably going to have to be a GM that's watching my stream that will teleport me out of the area. That's 100% what I'm going to do. Break the game. Yes, we will So the alpha is, of course, underway at Blizzard. Yeah, just in general. Alpha? No. We've actually recently seen a new Dragonflight Alpha test build be uploaded to WoWDev. That's all encrypted, mm -hmm. of course, but it's just a bit more evidence. It does mean that external alpha is almost certainly going to come out soon, though. I would expect within a few weeks. I wouldn't That'd be surprised be great. if it was next week. Let's talk about some times then. Oh, oh my fucking god. Next week, we're going to get the alpha for WoW? Bro, I... I this is stressing me out, man. Like, I gotta play. I gotta play the game a lot. Max said very soon. I mean, I think that there's a good chance that it's going to be very soon. I'm ready. Actually, use Wad here because it's not it's I know that people don't want an alpha and they don't want the content tested. Would I want the content to be more buggy but completely new? Yeah, I think so. I think I would. I think if I, I if, if I had to choose, I would rather have buggy content that I don't know what's going to happen than min-max content on release for Alpha. Yeah, they're trying to... So, yeah, Blizzard was like, Asmund's playing Final Fantasy again. Shit, okay, all right, all right, all right. Bring out Wrath beta. Shit, okay, that didn't work. All right, bring out the Dragonflight beta. Come on, we're going to get him out. We're going to get him out of that weeb shit. Kind of similar with dates. So, Warlords of Draenor external testing started June yeah, 5th. Yeah, of course. It's all about it me, guys. 161 days. I think that's five months and eight days. And then the expansion came out. If the exact same timing occurred right now, mm -hmm. with Alpha starting next Tuesday, then Dragonflight would release Tuesday, November 29th. Funny Bro, enough, are you talking about November? Like, I was thinking about, like, this shit would come out in, like, December 30, 32nd or 33rd, you know? Like, somewhere around there. I, I, uh, November? Oh my god. The week after Shadowlands launched, relatively speaking. And I think that's actually a somewhat important thing to point out. You see, Legion released in August. Uh -huh. BFA also released in August. There it is. For a time, it looked like a decently well-oiled machine, an expansion every two years. And while we don't yeah. have a third August release that we can, you know, use to draw the trend line, I think we can safely say Shadowlands probably had the same launch target, only for BFA's issues and then COVID, of course. I think that two years for expansion is good. I would be okay with an expansion every 18 months. But I would prefer two years because I feel like expansions, like I want, want people to have time to, you know, like have, like play their character and get used to the zones. I think two years is great. Every, I feel like every year is too often, man. Like people, like it's just, you get kind of rushed through everything. It's kind of one of the, re one of the reasons why I didn't really get that hyped up about Burning Crusade. It felt like you just weren't able to hold on to the gear for long enough to make it, to make you feel like it mattered to knock its planned release date back to late October. And then of course, the delay took us to late November. So you might be wondering then, 
is this development realistic? I know a lot of people are quite worried now that they're finding out the expansion is coming out relatively soon. There's a lot of people that think that Dragonflight is like basically what they think is Bobby is just Bobby's yacht payment came due and he didn't have the money for it. Or actually, he did have the money for it. He didn't want to spend it. He needs to make some more money. And so Bobby's having the WoW devs work double time to bring out a new expansion. Right. And it, yeah, it's rush trash. Yeah, they're worried that it's going to be rushed and it's going to be trash. I don't know if that's true or not. It, in my opinion, I will say again, I think that pretty much all of the decisions, minus some of the tier set decisions and the tuning for the fucking new raid, I think that pretty much everything Blizzard has done after 9.15 has been good. They've communicated well with players. They've responded to problems the game has had. They've solved those problems and they've added content. Yeah, I, I, I think it's good. So let's do that. First up, during the reveal event, Blizzard actually... People say in chat, they do that every time at the end of the expansion. And you know what? You're fucking right. You are right. You are 100% right. And there is a very good chance that Dragonflight is going to come out and there's going to be some, like massive dick in the salad and blizzard's like i ah, just eat around it it's not that big i mean come on it doesn't even smell bad i ah, just eat look there's some other food over there like try to just eat around the dick and nobody wants to eat around the dick they just want the dick out of the salad and it takes it a year to get the dick out of the salad and then finally whenever they do people are like oh my god i can't believe blizzard's listening again they're not gonna have dicks in the salad anymore new expansion comes out new dick in the salad that's what it is. Top-notch metaphor. It's not mine. It's Bellyor's. He thought of this one. Actually said they were more ahead of schedule than usual. Now, that certainly is a statement. But I think that's good, and I'm not surprised about that at all, because they're not adding in some massive new system. You've got to think about it. Think about how much development time they wasted with Covenants. Think about how much development time they wasted with like these other systems, like Azerite gear. It's not in the game. The talents, the difference between talents is that talents will transcend, talents will transcend the expansion. And also, here's what I think they're doing with talents. I'm gonna be honest. I think they're probably just gonna take away half of our abilities and then make us pick them as talents. So it's probably not as complex as you think. But there are ways that that statement could make sense. So first up, Shadowlands was likely cut down quite a bit. Legion had a launch raid, then 7-1, then 7-2, then 7-3. That's it had why four raids. Uh, of course, with other bits of content coming along with them. BFA, four raids, plus a fifth mini one. Shadowlands had three raids. The tiers were all quite long, and the storyline of the expansion was very clearly both cut and compressed. Yeah. A lot of things that were teased, like Bane finding out the origin of his people just didn't happen. So instead, Bane just spends the entire expansion sitting down in Oribos. Yeah, Bane was a wasted character. I, I, I feel bad about that. Bane was one of my favorite characters in WoW. Like, I was uh, disappointed. Not Bane, but like Karen. Karen was one of my favorite characters. And like, Bane just doesn't fucking do anything, man. It sucks. Just about nobody liked it. <laughs> Yeah. Now, guess what other expansion fits that mold? Warlords of Draenor. Just that I think Wad was even more cut down. It had a strong start. It had a middle that was literally cut. There was no Shatrath raid. Yeah. Um, no middle to Yorel's arc, which led to this crazy, weird, rushed ending that was laughed at by people. Now, one thing that does explain a late 2022 dragon. I didn't really care about the ending of uh, of Wad being bad. Like it's the same as I didn't really care about the ending of Shadowlands being bad. It's like, yeah, this is fucking garbage, but I just want to move on. Let's move on. That's fine. Yep, it's garbage. Let's move on. Right then, is Shadowlands being cut down, allowing for Blizzard's regular two-year-long release schedule to continue? Yeah. Essentially there, a producer would say, okay, we have to cut this amount of Shadowlands. It will have this much, uh, you know, resources. Everyone else, we're going to keep Dragonflight it's on fine. schedule. It's fine. No, it's not. I know people, like, I just... I don't really care. The reason why I don't really care is because I'm still having fun playing the game. 
there are a lot of people that just like I, it, it's weird that they they just like they they hate wow they're like oh man i fucking hate wow wow such a bad game i didn't really care uh, hi fandy um I, I didn't really care about this because i'm having fun playing the game they had a story you know some story plot line that i think is stupid who gives a fuck yeah who cares like i i don't give a shit about this i'm just playing the game so it wasn't like a big that. deal uh, there's another reason though and i think it is likely to do with risk yeah shadowlands had a number of complex features things like torghast and Covenant. i think that people were mad because blizzard didn't respond and and react to the feedback they gave people said we don't like this and blizzard said yes you do that's why people were mad. It had nothing to do with the fact that they tried it. It had to do with the fact that they forced it on players even after they said they didn't like it. People said, oh, we don't like this. Like, this is bad. Like, I don't care if Blizzard has some dumb system in alpha or beta. It doesn't matter. I don't even care if it goes to live. I care if after that happens and it's not working out, it doesn't get changed. As they pertain to player power, right? A massive number of new class abilities, each with spec permutations for the Covenant abilities. Then you go to Torghast, that's a, a mode, the format of which changed quite a bit during testing, and it's something that would have taken a massive amount of per-spec design. If anything would be a development time vampire, and a source of dreaded unknown unknowns, which are the worst part in development, yeah. it would be features like those. So what about Dragonflight then? Well, it does have the profession revamp. That's pretty massive, but it's also kind of isolated. It's its own all, closed all things system. Need testing. Yes, but I think we can all see how Torghast would perhaps need more testing than professions. I would, and would guess be harder so. to implement. Then you've got the talent tree rework. Now that is a massive feature, but it's not necessarily adding a massive amount of new stuff. Rather, it's more consolidating all of these years of class design into a brand new system. I think that I, I think the talent trees are a good idea. Uh, I'm a big fan of Blizzard's talent tree system idea. I, I like it a lot. I think it's smart. Uh, I think that like having this in the game, the reason why I like what they're saying about Dragonflight is the fact that they're not promising something really big. And it might sound weird. It's like, wait, so you're happy that something crazy isn't happening? Yes, I am. I'm happy that they're finally ste stepping back and saying, okay, how are we going to develop this game for the next five years, for the next 10 years? And trying to build the foundation rather than just constantly shifting the problem every expansion. Talent trees make people feel like they're in control of their character. Exactly, yeah. Now that's definitely hard to do well, but it's not being done in an environment where they also have to deal with covenant abilities, soul binds, conduits, and legendary powers. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me then the Dragonflight has less unknown unknowns. An unknown unknown is just the sort of thing, it's something you don't know. It's something, yeah, yeah. You, you And it is a problem, but you don't know that it's going to be a problem until you find it. Unlike a known unknown, which is the sort of unknown thing you can plan for. Suffice to say, an unknown unknown, that's the thing that just makes everything horrible. And I think Dragonflight probably has and probably has been designed. Yeah, it, it's, it's very simple. It's like if you ever tried to fix something in your computer and you know there's something wrong with it, and, and then like you try to fix it and you realize you're actually causing a second problem, but like you had no idea that was even going to happen. That, that's basically what it is. Minds to have fewer of them. Okay, next, let's talk about the pre-order bit. Get your wallets ready, everybody, because Dragonflight is more expensive. In the UK, prices have increased by £10. In the US, it's also up by $10. And that's across all tiers. And this is I think that buying an expansion for $50 is totally fine. I do. I, I, I think that it's totally fine. I don't have a problem with it at all. This is okay. Uh, anybody who's getting mad about this is being unreasonable. Blizzard has had the same price for WoW for 15 years. There are very few things that are the same price that they were at in 2004 they are at today. A $50 expansion is not unreasonable. Kind of in line with a general AAA price increase. Yeah. Really, Sony have led the charge there, um, notching their things up to $70. So right now, you've got the base edition at 50 the heroic. Yeah, uh, even with a monthly subscription. Yeah, I, I would say so. I mean, that's been the paradigm that they've always had. I think that most people that play WoW, it's like that's pretty much what you're expecting. And again, like, I think that the development costs have gone up. 
inflation has happened massively. A $50 game that you're going to play constantly is not that bad. I, I even, like, I've even said New World was that way. Says so Millionaire? I, you know, I bought, you know, I was in, in high school whenever this game came out, right? I wasn't a millionaire in high school. I was a, uh, I was a dollar heir in, in, in middle school. And I'm not talking about the, the, like, I'm not talking about Benjamins. I'm not even talking about Jacksons. I'm talking about Washingtons, maybe a Lincoln or two. That's about it. If you can't get 50 fucking dollars together to buy a goddamn game, you need to stop playing video games and figure out why the fuck in your life you can't get $50 together to play a fucking game. That's a fact. Now, there's some people in third world countries that aren't that lucky, but I'm talking about people here in the U.S. Quick at 70, the Epic at 90. You get so your you shit get? together, well, quit playing games. The base games. is just the game, and if it's a pre-order, you get the Dracus, or Drac, whatever, Drax pet. Uh, $20 yep. more gets you a level 60 boost, a mount, and another pet. Yep. The mount certainly does look quite nice, but that is what we expect, because it's a store mount. Uh, 20 more dollars on top of that gets you 30 days of yeah. game time, a hearthstone effect, a head transmog, and dragon wings. Yeah, you get the dragon wings. Like I, I got this, and like there's different dragon wings for every single different, uh, every single different uh, dragon race or whatever. And it's like this is nice. Like I feel like selling this stuff. It's like it's. I think it's fucking stupid to be honest with you. But selling it with an expansion, I don't really care that much about. The only thing that I think is bad is whenever this stuff comes out constantly. For your back with uh, colors to match each of the main flights. So it's quite a lot, actually. And the pricing is, well, it may seem strange, but it isn't. They're yeah. very obviously trying to push people up to heroic because of it's course. $20 more, has a bunch of cosmetics, and it contains a boost. And a boost of... Of course they're trying to get people to spend more money. Absolutely. Like, yeah, I mean, of course, wings for furries, so there'd be scalies in that in that instance, right? Uh, you, can, you can't criticize the game before it's out, but you can buy it. Yeah, I mean, of course I, I pre-ordered the game. It's my job to play the game. What do you think, I want to fucking download this shit on release day? No, it's, it's my job to play video games. I will say this. I will not recommend anybody to pre-order a game. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. You could do whatever you want with your money. But I'm not going to tell you you should pre-order a game. It's not even out yet. Just watch me. Of course, it's usually uh, priced at a lot more than $20. Mm -hmm. But then to entice you $20 even more than that, it you comes with the 30 stuff. days of game Ooh. time with the most expensive edition. Ooh. Now, if bought on a single, you know, just one, you know, one off, then that's 15 bucks for the Americans anyway. And it's only $20 more. Now, the thing is that 30 days of game time will, mm -hmm. I assume, be active from when you buy it. So it would only actually be worth it if you were to play for the next month and a bit. Otherwise, is that 15 bucks of value? I, otherwise, you, you wouldn't be using. That actually, that's clever. I just kind of go yeah, into this that's because very clever. it's always fascinating to see how companies break down the kind of... Wait, McConnell, why are you mad? ...logical, rational consumer side. All right, we'll continue the video. The ...purchases. Um, yeah, I don't know. We're all Plinketto balls just falling towards some pricing tier. Okay, there's actually more stuff in the store, Wait, though. What? So they've added a mini Ursoc pet for 10 bucks, and they've also launched... Bro, it doesn't even look like Ursoc. It, 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 it doesn't even look like Ursoc. That's, that's just a bear. But I, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's cute. Who bought it? Who already bought it? It's $10 for a pet. It might be more. The Midsummer's Night pack. You know, for all the Shakespeare fans. <laughs> <laughs> now that includes a bunch of existing cosmetics, uh -huh. the Ursoc pet thingy, and they've also, by the way, discounted Shadowlands. And then there's also the complete edition, which has, of course, been updated for Dragonflight, clocking in. I heard that you actually had to own Shadowlands to, to buy Dragonflight. Is this true? You, you, you have to own both expansions now? That is the dumbest thing that Blizzard has ever thought of. Like, if, if Blizzard did that, I actually think that they're so stupid. Because there's a lot of people that aren't going to buy both of them. Like, they're going to lose money. Because the barrier to entry for playing a game is now over $100. Nobody's going to spend $100 to play a game unless it's on mobile. That's not going to happen. It's only for pre-order. Uh, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense then. Uh, I don't know. $110 for Heroic and $130 for Epic. 
Ah, oh, there you go. You know what? There's one thing that I'm really pissed off at here, and it's totally a selfish thing. Um, I was personally really hoping that Diablo Immortal would be their only major Q3 or Q2 sales event, because if it was, then we could get a decent idea of how Immortal will have impacted their revenue versus baseline, and that is now impossible to do because of all of the people who are going to be pre-ordering World of Warcraft stuff. I think they still have it segmented out. Uh, that they've they've still had it segmented out in previous earnings reports, but it might not be. Uh, necessarily like d defined but uh yeah i i think that bellure is right it would be nice if we had that i think that diablo immortal might not even make that much money on the first one i think what's going to happen is diablo immortal what these games do is they collect whales over time it, and they, they get these whales involved and like if you look this is what i showed the other day right is the money that candy crush made it started making billions of dollars three years into its development. So at the first year that it made, uh, that it came out, it made the least amount of money. So I think that just over time, Diablo Immortal will start making more and more money because it will become more and more popular. And also, like, all the negative press from Diablo Immortal will fade away. And then people will just play the game and that's it. Sad. And also, it hasn't been released in China. By the way, there's actually still a bunch of encrypted assets in the game. The so fuck? I imagine those will show up with some sort of Wrath Classic, uh, you know, edition or something like that. Okay, to wrap it up, what do I think? Well, I think number one, this is all very unexpected. Yeah, it 2023, is. 2023, I think, made sense to a lot of people. I think a situation where we all just realized as a community, like, WoW cannot take another bad hit. So... I suppose it was the community... I think both. it can. I think that WoW can release three more shitty expansions and people will keep buying them. And everybody's going to be like, oh, not me. Not me. I ain't going to buy it. Uh-uh, not me. Nope. Uh-uh. I, I think people will just keep buying them. People keep buying EverQuest expansions. People buy FIFA every year. Like, it's the same fucking game. The, yes, it doesn't matter. They're going to keep buying them hoping for 2023 because we just wanted to have more time in the oven but also the community kind of wanting to give blizzard the permission to do 2023 because we wouldn't want the developers to feel rushed to the point of having to put out a, a bad product because i think we understand what's at stake and that's why so many of yeah. us uh, would actually be prepared to wait for a you know relatively a, a bit of a longer time in development people just want to play the game when it's good they don't want to play a shit game. That's all there is to it. It's not complicated. It's not complex. It's not nuanced. They just don't want to play a shit game. But I suppose it's the kind of thing where they're either going high risk and they really want that in for Q3 of this year, or it's the case that Shadowlands gets cut to pieces so that they can maintain the expansion development timeline for, um, you know, for, for this expansion. Yeah. I mean, I do remember Preach's core takeaway, talking with Ian about uh, borrowed power and confidence. And uh, I mean, suffice to say, I don't think the again. interview yeah. really went uh, in the way that a lot of current WoW players would have wanted it to. Certainly, it was like that for me. But Preach's like takeaway was, "This is what we're doing now, but we're not doing that again in the future." And that I just I I hated that interview, man. I felt that Ian said like so many things that just like made no sense. Like, I, I think that really, yeah, the corrupted trash can. There you go. There he is. I just want to have the game. I want to have the developers that play the game, that understand the everyday annoyances of the game and, accurate, and, and actually work to fix them and make them better. That's what I want to see happen. Uh, it's like all of the little stupid things in the game. Whenever I see a little stupid thing happen in the game and it gets fixed, I'm really happy. Because that means that there's somebody that works at Blizzard who actually, actually played the game. That kind of just makes you think, well, these expansions obviously do take uh, quite a lot of time to develop. You know, by the time Shadowlands is launching they're going to be in pre-production for the next expansion, right? Yeah. Because it just takes a bloody long time to make these things. And I suppose that just makes me think, did they uh, did they just decide Shadowlands is the thing that takes the hit here, not Dragonflight? I think that's the only way the Dragonflight comes out the end of this year. And I think that's the smart thing to do for Blizzard. I think that it's like, 
cut your losses, give up on Shadowlands. Everybody hates it. Just, just like, all right, you know what? The game sucks, and that's all there is to it. it, it you know what I mean? It's not going to happen if you keep eating tra crappy expansions up. Well, I'll keep playing them as long as people like watching WoW. I mean, that's the same thing, right? I'm a streamer. It's what I do. Uh, of course I'm going to play the new game. It's the same as playing Diablo Immortal. I'm going to be honest. If I wasn't streaming, I would have never played Diablo Immortal. Straight up. I would never even have tried it. Uh, you know, doesn't feel a little bit rushed. Now, that said, I do yeah, it's certainly the hype have some there worries. I mean, I know that on the topic of class balance, people have had quite a few concerns. I know there's been some worry about Sepulchre. Um, and generally, a lot of the yeah, time throughout fucking, Shadowlands, this feeling of too like little, too times. late. And a lot of us would end up being really baffled. That yeah, nobody would care. If, if, they, if they made Shadowlands good in a 9.3 patch, literally no one would care. People would be like, huh, fixing it now, huh? Eh, too little, too late, Blizzard. You guys suck. And that's it. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's all it is. Yeah, they, they, they're not going to... There's no way for them to win there. You know what I mean? And uh, you got me addicted to PoE? Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, you couldn't be wrong. People are complaining about Alex Straza being less attractive. I think that, guys, again, can we just be realistic here? Let's just be realistic for one or two seconds. The company that got involved in a massive international scandal that received international publicity from everywhere about sexual uh, violations, sexual assault, uh, sexual things just in general, cube crawls, stealing breast milk, uh, you know, the, uh, the executives being weird to female employees. Like, guys, let's just be realistic. That company's not going to bring out a game where the main character is a girl in a chainmail bikini with huge tits. It's just not going to happen. Like, I understand that, like, everybody wanted that. I was one of them. However, it, it just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the Blizzard PR team. Yeah, but why? It's because of what happened. It's because of the fucking controversy, man, obviously. Uh, but yeah, but we're the ones signing. That's right, guys. So whenever they go around and they get too fucking handsy at their office, you know what that means? Make the players sign a new social contract. Hey, guys, listen up. We don't want to see any more bad behavior in this game. Yeah, we've been having a lot of problems with that. You guys have to sign a social contract. Yeah, it's too much. Their design's way better now. I, I think it's fine. I don't really give a shit. Like, I think they could make her boobs bigger, though. Like, that's that's one thing. Like, I don't care about the rest. Of they, they could definitely do that. Fixes that, totally on the face fine. of it, seem quite easy. It would take so long. I suppose the best case yeah. scenario for us right now is that those things took a long time because more people were working on Dragonfly. But obviously, that is just speculation. It's the kind of thing where cutting losses... I right, think that they took longer because the entire company was in, under investigation by California and the entire company was in disarray. Just realistically. I, I, I bet the entire company, like, shit was completely hitting the fan there. People that like, they were friends with for 10 years working at the company were just gone the next day with nobody even telling you why. Uh, I think that's what happened definitely be seen to make sense in the long run they cut their losses makes with sense. Quad. they had a big success with legion i think i they would did. come in and argue yeah but you definitely can't do that too often because churn is absolutely a brutal thing yeah um yeah i mean just look at what a churn rate does to a software as the sir uh, as a service business model right and uh, you find out the churn is one of the most worrying things for people in sas and what is wow wow is gas games as a service so you know all of these sort of metrics that go into the performance of a product, uh, they're, they're kind of similar. As for this release date, I imagine they're also quite aware of how competitive the market is right now. Um, I think that's definitely something, not just MMOs. Well, there's a lot of MMOs out right now. It's like people, if you don't like the way WoW is right now, you can straight up just not play the game. And you can go and play something else and that's it. I mean, just games in general. I think they know that a WoW player who wanders off might just get captured by another game. Yeah, they'll play something unlike else. Unlike how it would have been maybe 10 plus years ago. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it is just weird. Like our There's a bunch of other games. Like, if somebody doesn't like WoW, they can just go and play Elden Ring. They can go and play Lost Ark. They can go and play Final Fantasy. Uh, they can play a bunch of different games. They're not attached to WoW as if that's the only game out there. Content cadence has been, has been odd, but there's actually a weird... I don't want to call it a silver lining. It's just a thing I noted. So if Dragonflight comes out end of November, early December then the most recent major content patch would have been 9.2, which yeah. is late February. Now, that's like a nine-month gap. But yeah. the thing is, it's a gap that is then bolstered by 9.2.5 and by Season 4. Well, I think also by the pre-patch. Like, I think release the pre-patch early. Because usually the pre-patch in WoW is, is fun to play. Like, the pre-patch uh, in going into Shadowlands was pretty fun. The pre-patch from, like, Legion to BFA was fun. Uh, I think, yeah, just bring it out early and let people fuck around and just, like, goof around. Yeah, pre-patch is almost always enjoyable. Now, that means they've really... They've kind of made the best of what they've got. And I think it would also kind of mean that the worst of the development delays have perhaps already been felt in the Shadowlands patch cycle yeah. because it was just generally elongated. Ah, dear. Well, I think overall this bold strategy of theirs just demands that Dragonflight is uh, in an excellent condition uh, yeah. on launch because ultimately players will not forgive another dud. I think they will. I, I, In my opinion, I think that people will keep playing WoW. I understand that people want to say, no, no, that's not true. We're going to hold the line. And then next time that there's like a patch that comes out and it looks really popular, it's like, oh, okay, that's it's going to be fun. I'll do it again, right? Yeah, sure. It's just you? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I, I don't think so at all. I think there's a lot of people that are like that. And hopefully it isn't done. As I said, this is an expansion that feels less risky to me. Um, and I definitely say that uh, yeah. as, as a good thing. I do think that soon there will be the you know the time to really be pushing things forward in a crazy way, to be super daring about designs. But I think that what World of Warcraft needs right now is a very nice, just stable foundation. Yes. I think that the profession revamp, and the talent That's revamp, all. can provide a lot of that Just a, a bring out a new expansion that expands the base experience of the game. Do the things that you need to do. Make it good. You don't need to reinvent the world. $25 raids? No, you can only do that once a week. Of course not. So, uh, yeah. I'm feeling okay. I said one of risks. Well, I, I think that it's not. The thing is, like, you should take risks, but you should also not just do everything as a risk. Like, it, it's, it's okay to take some risks, and I think that they should take some risks, but I think that overall... That yes, it's important to make sure that you just release an expansion that builds up the base of the game. And also, by the way, I think taking an expansion without some big bad system, without some massive overarching enemy that like is going to ruin the world, I think that in itself is a risk. Do you see what I'm saying? Like that fundamentally is a risk because that's not what they've done for the last five years. About Dragonflight? I'm not necessarily thinking that this just by default means it's a really big disaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could look at some class balance issues recently and think, ah, well, you know what? They couldn't get that right. Obviously, the expansion is screwed. Yeah. Maybe that thing didn't get as much attention because more attention is going to, towards the expansion. It's kind of impossible to speculate mm -hmm. at this stage. Um, ultimately, I will say, um, personally, I'm definitely excited that there's going to be an alpha and a beta to talk about soon. Or per hopefully, if I get in, uh, you know, actually play and share my thoughts with you. Um, that will be an enjoyable process. I think we've all learned so much from BFA and Shadowlands that uh, the quality of player feedback, I think, is going to be better than ever this time around. And I'm very, very um, uh, just passionate and interested in, um, I, I think, that being a really good process. Yeah, we'll just have to see. I don't know, man. This seems like a less risky expansion. Maybe that means that... Sure, I think that it being a less risky expansion is risky fundamentally. And I know that sounds stupid. But I actually think that taking less risks and just going with uh, a, a base game and improving the base game is actually a bigger risk than just trying to up the ante again. It's like, oh, this guy's even more powerful than the Jailer and, you know, we're going to fight the Void Lords and you can be a Titan and, you know, like, it's like, what the fuck? I think that would have been less risky because that's what they kept doing. It's a bit less ambitious. 
but it can actually be pulled off to a higher level of quality. And I think that's what most of the current player base actually wants yep. at this stage. So let me know what you think about things, of course, in those comments down below. And, uh, well, I guess it really is Alpha Watch now. I could really drop any day now. Okay, I'm ready, man. What you think. I'm ready to play the See Alpha. You next time. Yeah, I'm ready to play the Alpha. Holy shit. It's going to be fun, man. But I'm going to go around exploring everything like that. Require good writing? Well, the thing is, like, if the game's not great, then who gives a shit? Like, I think that Blizzard, I think Bellier is right whenever he was talking about, like, how Blizzard, like, if the game's not good right now, if, if the game is not enjoyable right now and it's not fun, you can just go and play Final Fantasy. You sure they'll give you Alpha? I, I think they'll give me Alpha. I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, shit. Like, I, I play the game, I advertise the game, etc. Why wouldn't they give me Alpha? Do I have the Burning Crusade Alpha? Or, sorry, the, the Wrath Alpha? I don't know if I even do. Do you? I actually don't. I so, do. You do? Yes, I do. It might just be a bug. I might have to just restart my battle net. That could be it. I have no idea. But yeah, I don't have the Wrath of the Lich King bit. I have no idea. Blizzard hates you for playing Final Fantasy? Uh, I guess that must be it. Yeah, you're right. And uh, do you think they'll do something with a time skip for pre-patch? No, I don't think so. I thought they were going to do something with it, but I feel like they did make an, they did make a point to say how time passes differently in the Shadowlands. And I feel like they might have been going for a time skip, but then after it was received really badly, they they pivoted away from it. Now, I, I think that's absolutely possible that it happened, okay? And uh, for Antra, all right, I'll watch this video, then we'll start. We'll do a little bit of the, uh, the MSQ, okay, guys? How about they that? They need to come out with some information. What? About what? If the game is releasing this year, yeah, uh, we need to start seeing more talent trees, more features of Dragonflight, more profession shit, like... Real fucking soon. Real soon. I agree with that. I 100% agree with that. Is, it's literally being, like, drip-fed. It's so fucking slow. We need to see some shit so we can offer some feedback. Yeah, I think so. I think they need to tell people what's actually going on with the game pretty fast because I don't think people have any fucking idea. And it's like... It's like I almost forgot that Dragonflight even got announced. 